Hi, my name is Maria and I'm in the corner. And welcome to my channel FH Books. And today we're going to film my TBR for Women in Translation Month. I will be reading ooh, five books. One, two, three, four. And one book which I don't actually have yet because it's an order from the Gutter Bookshop. Yay! Um, I am have split it. I am not sure which order I'm putting this in, but if you look at my hard TBR, I am splitting my TBRs over the next few months to make sure I get 50 50 reading off the horror story, gothic, soak, fantasy side, and 50% of a more broader reading, concentrating more on females, people from other countries. Um, September will be themed around uh, of Dublin and, and getting a sense of place. There's a deliberate reason for this in that from the beginning of September onwards, I've taken August off, I will be doing a lot of writing in order to pick a, build up a portfolio of stories, poetry and um, novel outlines, but mostly short stories for a course that I'm starting in September 20, hopefully. Um, but I have to have a portfolio before I do it because that's what you're supposed to be working on. And I work full time, do booktube, enjoying the um, vlogs at the moment. But they're taking up a lot of time, but they're so good. And who needs sleep anyway? I mean, like black eyes look kind of nice. Looks like I've tried to put some makeup there or something. Um, so, yeah. So because so I, I be, I, I, and because I think splitting them makes an awful lot of sense because I love eclectic stuff. A lot of people I know and watch love eclectic stuff, but some people just like their horror. Some people just like the literary fiction. And by splitting it, it makes it easy for someone to kind of go, ah, no, not that one. And um, they want to, you know what I mean? Oh, I will watch this video because you know I want to know about the latest Stephen King book or the latest one in translation. So yeah, that, so that's the ideas behind it. So let's just crack on with this before this video gets too long. They will be put up in a couple of days and I hope I got learned how to time these things properly. I, I just usually just put them up but I'm not going to do this time. Okay, now you're going to laugh because I'm saying I'm slitting with things and things. You're going to go, so is this the horror one or is this the women in translated one because I think these books are mostly just horror books who happen to be by women um, who don't write originally in English because they kind of sort of veered to it accidentally. Yeah, accidentally. Um, so the first one I picked up way before it was listed, well maybe a month, way before it was listed for the International Booker in a charity shop because of its title. If I was doing Read and Rush, more than five words lads. Um, drive your plow over the bones of the dead. Who cannot pick up a book with that title in, okay? Um, by Olga, and now here we go again. Tak ar askavis, I will find a Polish person to teach me Polish last names. Too many Polish people in Ireland for me to, to fit this up every single time. Um, this book I'm going to use descriptions I have descriptions are not down below as in the title uh, as in the subtitles to this this video they're actually on my laptop which is physically down below underneath the phone that we're filming on okay but I thought it'd be fun this time to use little descriptions from Goodreads France okay so the reason for this one from a Goodreads friend is um, it's a twisted Miss Marple type who lives in a remote forest cabin in Poland, Polish author, um, near the Czech border. Um, she's determined to learn the truth of what happened to her two beloved dogs, whom she calls her little girls. Oh, so who wants, you wouldn't want to read a twisted Miss Marple book. The translator is, because this is Women in Translation, and where's our translator? It's Antonia Lloyd-Jones. Um, should we see, is there anything on the translator? Because, you know, this is part of this. So I'm just using Goodreads to help me here. And yeah, so Tony Lowe-Jones is a full-time translator of Polish literature. Her published translations include fiction by several of Poland's leaving contemporary novelists, including The Last Supper by Paweł Huel, 
here we go again, I can't pronounce names, for which she won the, the Found in Translation Award in 2008. Okay, next book. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I'll stop this so we don't go on too long so I can um, just put up the great feet for it. But oh, yeah. This one is Purge by Sophie Akson. And I'm laughing because Melanie of Mel's Book Learning Adventure simply wrote, I need counseling now! Exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. So it's an unsettling, this is somebody else's review. It's an unsettling read indeed. It tells the story of two women of different generations against the backdrop of Soviet occupation of Estonia. It's by a Finnish writer of Estonian descent. Uh, descent. It is so late at night. How hard to talk. Um, each woman has secrets to hide, and they are. Um, these are slowly revealed over the course of the book. Okay. I mean. People are just saying this is mad. Um, does sound like a Maria book. I was meant to read this last year for one in translation, I didn't. The translator is Lola Rogers, okay. Lola Rogers also translated another book that I've been reading to read for ages and that's the Rabbit Back Literature Society. I'm very tired. Um, which is a neuron enigmatic, um, chilling, darkly funny novel. So maybe the translator has a theme to long to read this one as well. I'm not sure what I'm going to get to if this is a male writer. Um, it is. La, 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 la. Finish. Pazzi. <laughs> Sorry. I actually will never quite get there. Maybe with Norwegian na names, but I shall try. I need to start working in an organization again that has lots of people from different countries and get them to teach me. And I'll still forget, but at least I'll have a good attempt at it. Next book I'm cheating on. It's a police procedural, written in 1976. If it fails my criteria of reading things that are not just currently released, this is the first of a series of books. The translator is only known for translating these books, according to so it's Lois Roth, and it's slightly cheating in that it's two authors. We have a male and a female, so the the first author is the female. So it's Maj Choval and Pito Valu. I'm, I'm saying Valu because I'm assuming a German pronunciation of the W. I don't know. Um, which case, why am I not pronouncing umlauts? I don't know. And it's translated from the Swedish, a forerunner for all the Swedish Gothic. Um, Nord, the Gothic Nord, Crown Nord that we, the dark we, we, we have been reading. Um, I've been looking forward to reading this for a while now. So there is, <laughs> it's two authors, but one of them is female, it is translated, so I'm counting it. And it is the first ever series in the police procedural. A girl goes missing, no, a girl, they found a girl's body, sorry, in a canal. And it takes them ages to work out who it is. And once they work out who it is, seemingly it all kicks off. But you've started a police procedural here. And last but not least, oh, last but not least in the physical books I have with me. The other we will have to put the picture of. And I will stop this again just so I can go and get my Goodreads. I won't do it with a Goodreads blurb. I know what it's about. And this one is not dark as far as I know. I picked this one up. It's The Invisible Life of Eudris Gusimo by Martha Bath Bathlatha. Sorry, I can't actually read the handwriting. You know what I mean? Like Batalta. Oh my god. Um this book I picked up because it was long listed for the Dublin Literary Awards. It's one of the few that wasn't either British or American authors and male authors. 
so I picked it up. I never actually got around to reading it. It's by a Brazilian author. It's set in the 1950s, 60s in Brazil. It's about basically a housewife and her sister. And the author says it's an amalgamation of women's stories that she knows from that era, what women's lives were really like. And everybody I know who's read it has absolutely loved it. So I'm just looking forward to giving this one a try. And it is not dark as far as I know. In fact, I think it's comedic in places. There's an irony. <laughs> it's sharp, dry, caustic and intelligent. But I'm not, oh yeah, a hearty helping of humour, but I'm not seeing anything blurbed about it being dark and twisted. So like, you know, that's, and it's nice and bright and yellow, so it can't be, can it? So that is my physical books. Now for my, I, you know, I'll get a book for a prompt for my um, ordered book. Okay, so yeah, the author that I normally read every Women in Translation month, is Yuko Ugawa and as far as I know all my books are translated by um, Stephen Snyder. He's the translator of the book that's being released on the 15th of August which is The Memory of Peace, insert picture here, Future Maria, and which is more of a science fiction based book based on a premise that people are living on an island, things are slowly disappearing. Anybody who remembers them, most people forget them, if you happen to remember them, you could be taken away by the memory police. That's all I know. I just know that I love her books, um, or at least Revenge and The Housekeeper and The Professor, which are the last two I read. And I am pre-ordered this from um, the Gutter Bookshop in hard copy. So I would have a copy for the 15th. Um, so that's me wrapping up my TBR. I'm going to go now and actually cool my feet in some cold water because it is so hot. You see, like even the rashes coming up. I'm getting rashes here at the moment, it, getting heat rashes. And I find that that, that antihistamines and, and just some cold water on my feet help a lot. There you go. Personal information you never knew about me. Um, until next time, I hope that whatever you're reading for the month of August, be it Women Translation or whatever, that you're going to enjoy it. I look forward to seeing all your TVRs. Bye now.